Good afternoon, guys. We're going to break this down real simple. Which hormone is responsible for breast tissue development? Estrogen. There is no debate. It is estrogen. Now, is it as simple as that? No. There are other hormones involved. Which hormones are involved? Prolactin and IGF-1. However, the primary hormone responsible for breast tissue development is estrogen. There is no debate. None. None whatsoever. It is a bit more complicated than that. Why is it more complicated? Because physiology is. So what makes it more complicated? Now, Estradiol, it's not the quantitative number that's actually important. It's the ratio. Now, is the ratio consistent? No. Some guys are predisposed to having gynecomastia with a abnormal estradiol to testosterone ratio. I've got some guys who are incredibly sensitive They've often been predisposed through anabolic steroid use, but some young guys as well, they notice some breast tissue development with a slightly elevated estradiol to testosterone. It's quite crazy, really. And when you actually control, not block, when you control their estradiol, their breast tissue development ceases and actually reverses. It's quite interesting, really, Testosterone replacement therapy can improve gynecomastia. Shock horror. It's obviously one of the alarming side effects of testosterone replacement therapy. However, gyno reflects typically an unbalanced, poorly controlled TRT protocol. Now, I am a massive advocate of daily subcutaneous testosterone sipinate and HCG injections because it is the most effective way of mimicking natural physiology. When we measure blood tests, we measure them in a trough. Now that it goes, goes along with common understanding that all the data that we've accumulated is in troughs. Now we want to eliminate peaks and troughs. Now, what is the most effective way of doing that? It's achieving a steady state or steady level of testosterone, estrogen and DHT. So you have to consider the mechanism whereby the testosterone enters the bloodstream, goes to the liver, gets attached to SHBG and then is available as free testosterone estradiol and DHT. Funnily enough, the ester is important, so the length of the carbon atoms uh, is an important deciding factor in your choice of ester. So to achieve stability, testosterone propionate is a poor choice of TRT. Half-life is purported to be about four days in reality, it seems to be less than that. And when you're measuring levels in a trough and you're deciding on dose adjustment based on trough levels, what people tend to do is they tend to increase the dose. However, this just reflects the fact that the prop has been metabolized quickly and you are not appreciating the significant peaks and troughs. Enanthate and sipinate are ideal. They're not perfect for everybody. They're not perfect for a couple of guys on my clinic who have single figure SHBGs who I've converted over to undecanate in order to actually achieve stability. So when you measure in a trough, what you are measuring is that exact moment exact time 
So you can be falsely reassured by having a normal estradiol and a normal free testosterone. So when you decide on which ester to choose and decide on making adjustments to your protocol, the biggest thing that you need to appreciate is, am I stable? Is this trough level pretty damn close to my peak level? And the only way that you can really do that is choosing an ester such as enanthate or cypionate and injecting daily and via the subcutaneous route. Why subcutaneous? Well, because it takes a longer time to be absorbed and travel to the liver. It goes into the adipose tissue and it goes into the capillaries and lymphatic system. That delay causes a decrease in estrogen compared to intramuscular injections. Intramuscular injections are fine. A lot of my guys on enanthate are on intramuscular injections because there is an issue with absorption partly due to the concentration of enanthate compared to cypionate and also the carrier oil is more viscous it's sesame oil versus olive oil and the preservative is less irritative in cypionate it being a little bit of benzoyl alcohol compared to chlorobutanol in enanthate so estradiol it's the ratio of estrogen to testosterone. Now we're always obsessed by interventional studies. Well, some people are obsessed by interventional studies. Let's take the trans community. Somebody wants to convert from Loretta, Stanley to Loretta, Stanley, Stanley to Loretta. Um, what hormone do they give them? Estrogen. What hormone do they block? You guessed it. They give them antiandrogens. So they appreciate the fact that it's the ratio of estradiol to testosterone, which is important, not the absolute number of estradiol. So you can have a massively elevated estrogen as long as your free testosterone is high as well it will not cause gynecomastia. Now there are other things like medications that can predispose you to excess estrogen. And if you take those medications, then that can cause a temporary spike. And if you measure in your trough, that level could be normal. However, you are causing a hormonal fluctuation and hence a disruption in the ratio which can predispose you to gynecomastia, abnormal breast tissue development. Now there are two phases to gyno. One is the proliferative stage, say that three times really fast, um, where your breast ducts proliferate. Uh, that is reversible. So people often panic when they have gynecomastia. Nobody wants boobies. Well, they can know what I'm gonna say. Um, so, <laughs> so that phase takes typically, and I say typically about six months. So if you do get some breast tissue development, you do not need to panic per se. However, you do need to look at your protocol you do need to look to see if it is a stable protocol and you do need to look at your quantitative numbers. Now, as you guys know, I am a fan of controlling, not blocking estrogen. So we microdose examastain if necessary. Most of my guys are not on an aromatase inhibitor. Those guys, are healthy guys. So they do not pollute their livers, they have a healthy body fat. Does that apply to the majority of the population? No, we're an unhealthy bunch. So if you are prescribed an aromatase inhibitor, I do not want you on it. So we are always working to get you off of it. 
Sometimes you need it to feel good to do those things that you need to do to have a healthy body weight. So when you have excess estrogen, and one of the cardinal symptoms of that is anxiety, that has a subsequent knock-on effect on your ability to do what you should be doing, and that is going out there and cracking on. Looking at your diet, looking at your lifestyle, exercising. However, when your mental state is not tipped up, then people often struggle. Aromatase inhibitors, they've, always, they've had a bad rap because they've been prescribed really inappropriately. Now, examastain is a suicidal inhibitor. Uh, it kills a small proportion of the aromatase enzyme. Traditionally, it's been prescribed really badly. Our average dose of examastain, if necessary, has traditionally been 1.6 milligrams. So a quarter of a tablet every four days. Now, appreciating that not everybody is the same and everybody reacts differently, what we've actually done is approached a compounding pharmacy. And we now have best spoke, one milligram, two milligram, whatever milligram capsules I deem necessary to optimize your testosterone to estrogen ratio through the use of examastain is now available to us. However, please appreciate that once you've addressed those things that have caused you to have a propensity to aromatization, physiology will adapt. So you will not need examastain. We are always working to have you on the least amount of medications possible. I want you feeling great. I want you to have a healthy testosterone to estrogen to DHT ratio for long-term physical and psychological well-being. So gynecomastia. What happens if you develop gynecomastia? You correct the ratio and you've still got gyno. Well, one of the tools available is tamoxifen, a selective estrogen receptor modulator. It's an interesting compound because obviously it blocks estrogen at breast tissue. However, in other tissues, it does not actually have that antagonistic effect. It can actually have an agonistic effect. The testicles is a prime example. So it has been used or investigated for infertility. You want estrogen in the testicles. So another reason why we prescribe HCG is it produces testicular testosterone. And the aromatase enzyme is present in the testicles. So you get conversion to estrogen, and that helps facilitate the process of spermatogenesis. So tamoxifen, an interesting compound, but in the breast tissue, it blocks estrogen. It's used in breast cancer patients, females, and it can be used in men to reverse gynecomastia, hopefully, because once gyno's reached the fibrous stage, tamoxifen's not gonna do much for that, unfortunately, and your only option really is surgery. What's another treatment modality? DHT, DHT cream. We actually have access to DHT cream at the Men's Health Clinic. I believe we're the only clinic in the UK that does. We are still waiting on our wholesaler. We need to hurry them up. Um, but again, interesting. So topical DHT cream has been purported to reverse gynecomastia. But again, if it's reached the fibrous stage, then unfortunately, your only option is surgery. You don't have to worry per se about gyno. It's actually an aesthetic thing. There's no pathology or no malignant pathology, but nobody really wants to have boobs. I often think about that Bill Hicks sketch when, it, no, I'm gonna say that. <laughs> gonna land myself in trouble. I'm always landing myself in trouble. Um, so gyno, 
There is no confusion. Estrogen is the primary hormone. It's not the quantitative number, it's the ratio. It's actually about the inconsistency or fluctuation. More importantly, it's treated by having, interestingly, a stable TRT protocol, controlling estrogen as necessary. Treatment includes tamoxifen, DHT cream, However, if it's reached the fibrous stage, then unfortunately surgery is your only option. So, moral of the story is control estrogen through having a stable protocol. Measuring in a trough will give you false reassurance if your injection frequency is too long. Daily injections, subcutaneous injections is gold standard.